Mitch was born on the 21st of October in the warm waters near the equator. The sun heats the surface of the sea, evaporating one trillion tons of water into the air each day. So once in the air, where does it all go? At about 2,000 feet up, the water vapor cools and condenses back into tiny water droplets. This is the dew point. It's where all clouds are born. Each single cloud is made up of billions and billions of water droplets. Carried aloft by the rising warm air, they billow upwards. If the heat from the sea below is strong enough, they grow into massive tropical storms. The 22nd of October, 1998, began as a normal day. At the National Hurricane Center in Miami, it was a day they would never forget. Way out in the Caribbean, a major storm system was building. It developed uh, quite fast after it became a tropical storm. For several days, we were monitoring this uh, cluster of uh, thunderstorms in there and in the Caribbean, but we knew that it was going to be a threat somewhere in the Caribbean. In the capital city of Honduras, Tecasagulpa, people were oblivious to the gathering storm out to sea. It was hurricane season, and this part of the world is used to it. <laughs> As it spun towards Honduras, sucking up vast amounts of water, the wind speeds picked up. At 75 miles an hour, Mitch officially became a hurricane. It was picking up two billion tons of water vapor each day, which inevitably has to fall somewhere. On the 27th of October, it was business as usual in the capital. We were in direct contact with the forecast office in Honduras, Nicaragua, Belize, uh, Central America. And in fact, the hurricane was so large that we knew that it was going to affect with rain and strong winds all the north coast of Honduras. So the warnings were up like uh, 20 hours in advance. The next day, Hondurans began to prepare for the worst. Out at sea, the warm waters of the Caribbean fuel the cycle of evaporation and rain. By now, Mitch had been rated a Category 5 hurricane, the most lethal on the potential damage scale. In Tecasagulpa, Pedro Funes and thousands like him were on their way to work. By the evening of the 29th of October, Mitch had already reached the northern coast. In this case, the destructive power now is contained in the very, very heavy rains that are being released as the circulation interacts with a very mountainous landmass here, Honduras and Nicaragua down here. And it draws in moisture both from the Pacific Ocean and from the Caribbean Sea uh, from both sides. And the circulation is so large that it's very slow to spin down. Mitch was so big, that while its center covered the land, its spinning edges sucked up vast amounts of water vapor from the Pacific and the Caribbean. It then poured it straight back down again onto the land. And so uh, the real disaster is, is really yet to come in terms of uh, the mudslides and, and the very uh, great uh, catastrophes that occur as a result of several feet of water being deposited over the uh, mountainous terrain here. The water racing down from the mountains was funneled into the valleys at terrifying speeds, wiping out anything in its path. Residents watched in horror as friends and neighbors were swept away, along with whole neighborhoods. In the capital, 
Tegucigalpa, mudslides washed whole shanty towns into the river. One of those houses belonged to Pedro Funes, and this is all that's left. You could hear people crying. People began to scream. It all happened so quickly. However much you wanted to take some kind of action, it was very difficult. We were almost on the edge of the cliff. I think they died quickly. When the cliff collapsed, Pedro lost his entire family. By the 31st of October, Mitch had disintegrated and the remnants moved away out into the Gulf of Mexico. The hurricane is both a miracle of nature and it's a monster. I, I, when the meteorologist looks at it from afar, he admires it as a thing of beauty and something that uh, I think a lot of people would look at, even the non-meteorologists, and say, wow, that's something really spectacular. But at the same time, we recognize that the more beautiful it looks, probably, the, the more potentially uh, destructive it's going to be. From the rubble of his home, Pedro was only able to find one body, that of his youngest son, Javier. On a quiet hill above the city, survivors pay their last respects. Mitch was the most lethal storm in modern history. Over 7,000 people killed, 8,000 missing, and over 12,000 injured. The death toll in this hurricane ranks with the, the, the deadliest hurricanes of all time. This was certainly a, a very, very catastrophic event and one that we hope will not be repeated. An entire country had very nearly been wiped out by one of the most powerful hurricanes the world has ever seen. When it was over, Billions of gallons of water drained away into the Gulf of Mexico. Having brought destruction to Central America, this same water is now about to become a key source of the weather in Britain and Europe. And this coconut could be rolling onto a beach in Cornwall. To understand how, we have to join perhaps the most famous part of the thermohaline conveyor. Drawn out of the warm waters of the Gulf of Mexico by the thermohaline conveyor, the Gulf Stream runs practically the entire length of the North American coastline before reaching out east across the Atlantic towards the UK. It's 10 degrees Celsius warmer than the sea around it, so it heats the air above it. All that moist warm air is then picked up and carried with the westerly winds to Europe. Incredible as it seems, this massive river of warm water gives Britain and Ireland the wet and mild climate we all enjoy so much. <laughs> <laughs> 